Hey guys, Mondo here. I am at the Circle T concrete plant today and I got a cool video. I'm gonna show you their plant basically and I'm gonna show you kind of how this thing works. So that's the plant in the background. I'll get as much information as I can from these guys on how this thing works because uh, I really don't have a clue. I'm uh, gonna learn as I go here and I'm gonna try to teach you how this concrete is batched up and how we get our concrete. Um, I've been on the other end of it for years, but I've really never taken the time to go to a plant and really see how this stuff is made. Um, so uh, stay tuned, it's gonna be pretty cool. Thanks. Okay guys, like I said, I am at the Circle T Ready Mix plant. This plant is actually located in New Haven, New York, and we're in Oswego County. This is upstate New York. Um, if you don't know where that is, that's basically, we're like 45 minutes north of Syracuse, New York. So this is, uh, we live out in the country pretty much. You know, this isn't, when you think of New York, some people think we're out in the city. Definitely not city here. But this is their plant. And uh, like I said, Swiggle County, New York. I'm going to show you how this thing works to the best of my knowledge. I did uh, pick a few of their brains on some of this. I'm gonna get as much information as I can. Sounds like they're starting up the plant right now. So let's start where they put their materials. Actually, I will show you their material piles first. So concrete is made up of sand, stone, and Portland cement for the most part. There is some additives that you can put in concrete like slag and fly ash, um, but for the most part, these guys are making concrete pretty much with just sand, stone, and uh, Portland cement, like I said. So they have these bins here that they store all their aggregates in. So obviously that's sand. That's just clean, sifted sand. Right here, it looks like just clean stone, another stone. And then there's different sizes of stone too, guys. Like these are, uh, like more of a pea stone right here. See how small they are? Kind of grab it with my hand. Pretty small stuff. From this pile is getting up there. These are like number one stones. They call them number ones. They're a little bigger. So that's, and then over here, we got what is called limestone. This is actually a little bit different stone. Some concretes call for this limestone. This is more of a blue stone. These look like number one limestone. These come out of a quarry. Up, most of this limestone comes out of a quarry up in Watertown, New York. Um, they blast it out and crush it. This stuff here is more of the stone that we have in our area. And this is actually a crushed stone. So there's uh, gravel pits that make this stuff. They basically take larger stones and they smash it down. And this, this stone here, all this stone has no um, fines in it, basically. It's just stone. They don't have any sand or nothing in it because you just want the stone and the sand's gonna be separate when they put it in. So they have this big loader over here, that John Deere loader. And what he does, he scoops up that aggregate and he puts it over here. Bear with me, I'll get over there. There's this hopper right here, this big hopper. So he dumps the aggregate into the hopper and that is just a big conveyor, just like a conveyor, a concrete conveyor, basically. It's got a, looks like a stoplight on there, probably tells him how much to dump in there when he can and can't, but you can see that conveyor, guys. Huge conveyor right there. And that material runs up, after he dumps it in, it runs up this conveyor and dumps into this area right here. And that, and that inside of there, I'll take you in there, but there's another conveyor that pulls the material from in here, up here, towards where they park the trucks underneath there. So that's all closed in right there, but there is a conveyor under there. And from what I'm told, they weigh the material in there. So material goes in here, your sand and your stone, not your Portland, goes in there, runs up that conveyor, drops down into this section right here. Another conveyor pulls it up here. 
after it's weighed. There's a computer that tells um, this whole system what to do, basically. So that computer won't let anything batch until those weights are where they need to be. And if you look right here, guys, that huge silo right there is actually all Portland cement. So that's Portland cement, this huge silo right here, this whole thing right here is all Portland cement. So that's how they get their Portland cement, actually dumps down into the truck from there. This piece right here, this is just a big vacuum cleaner, basically. It sucks up all the dust and everything as they're loading the trucks. And they're gonna back their trucks right underneath here. And basically, there's a spot in here that weighs the Portland. It comes out of the hopper and it gets weighed and the computer needs to be satisfied with the weight of the Portland. And also over here, like I said before, the materials stored in here, the aggregate material, and that's actually weighed. And then those two materials, this is called a dry batch plant. It's not a wet batch plant. So those dry materials, the sand, stone and the portland all dump into the truck these trucks are built so they drive right underneath this area over here you see that uh basically tarp system right there there's this whole tarp system right here and that's where the trucks drive right underneath there and you can see that vacuum hose right there guys goes up to that big vacuum cleaner right there and sucks up all your dust and stuff so basically that's how they are. I'll show you the concrete truck too. These concrete trucks. I'll take you right over to the, this truck over here. So in the top of your concrete truck, we got several trucks here. They run these these front loader trucks. These are called front loader trucks. Some of the um, people I've talked to on the YouTube channel don't get these trucks they don't use these trucks they have rear discharge trucks the older style but these front loaders are a lot nicer for for me the mason and for the driver because you can unload as you can see right out the front of the truck you don't have to back up and all that so it works out better for me works out better for the driver but what i really want to show you is the hopper right here guys that hopper right there is actually where all your materials dump into the truck from the batch plant and it runs down into the concrete barrel and it gets mixed and uh it all it all like i said it all goes in there it's not mixed when it goes into the truck and the truck actually mixes it the truck has water on it but there is water that'll go into the whole mix too so you'll have your water and your sand and your stone and your portland all go into the truck and uh, everything's weighed and that computer system on the batch plant actually tells you how much of each you need for certain um, PSI concrete. There's different PSIs of concrete. We generally pour a 4,000 pound concrete. But moving over here to the plant again, guys, that pipe right there inside of this basically dust enclosure here. This is your dust enclosure which I, like I said before, goes up. You can see it actually there's two pipes. There's a black pipe here and a pipe here that go up and, and that's just a big vacuum, that square part right here. You can see the motor on top of it. It's got a huge motor and it's actually filtered. The, um, it's got a big filter inside of it. So when, when they dump that Portland and stuff into the truck and the dust flies, that just sucks it right up and it filters everything out so you don't get that um, dust into the environment. So this is their drive pad where they actually drive up their trucks. They come right into here and they park right here. And that tube right there is where everything comes out of, which is hooked to that conveyor. You can see that aggregate conveyor from underneath here. Basically it's right there. That's the conveyor belt right there as it comes out of the aggregate hopper, which is over here. And if you look up in there, aggregate comes out of here and Portland comes out of this smaller tube right here. So they actually don't mix until they get into the into the um, truck. That's where they batch them into the concrete truck. So let me show you that again. There's your aggregate hopper, goes up the conveyor into this area. There's a conveyor inside of here. 
Material gets weighed, conveyor takes it up. Here's that conveyor up to here, dumps it into the truck. There's your silo up on top with your um, vacuum for dust. Everything comes down into this area right here. It dumps into your truck. There's also a water tank, guys, right there. That thing that looks like a big bathtub. You see the hose coming down off of it. The hose right, try to point it out for you. This hose right here brings water down into right there. Same thing, it comes down into here. So they're actually putting the, you know, the water that you would, would need for a certain uh, slump of concrete. They'll add the water. You can fine tune the water inside the concrete truck because there's actually uh, water on your concrete truck as well. There's a tank on these trucks. I can quick show you that too. But these trucks actually carry water with them so that when you get to the job, if the slump's not what you want, they can actually add some water to it. And there's slump meters inside these trucks so they can kind of tell what their slump is. But here's their water tank here. And uh, that's water they can dump into their barrel as you get the concrete if you don't like the slump or it dried out on you a little bit, they can add water right in their trucks. So this is a big plant. It looks like it's made by C-O-N-E-C-O. That's where that's made. It says right on the side of it. I believe this is a portable plant. It's, the main plant is on wheels, but I don't ever think they're gonna move it. But um, This looks like a truck for hauling uh, all in uh, Portland probably but they got a lot of equipment here I'll take you over here to what's called their basically where they dump the concrete out the leftover concrete they call it a slurry pit basically when they get done with a concrete job and there's concrete left over on their truck they just mix a whole bunch of water with it and they got to put it somewhere and there's usually always a little bit of concrete left over from a job so they will take it back here to the plant and they will dump it inside this area here I actually helped pour this section here one day gave them a hand here but these are i guess they're called sediment ponds guys that's what that's the terminology basically they dump their slurry water in here and it all separates and the the fine stuff goes or the aggregate stuff goes down to the bottom after it's uh, solidified and they can go in here and clean these out basically so they're full of water and they clean them out but these are like ramps you can actually clean them right out probably full of water right now just because of the snow and stuff we're just our stuff's just melting off there's the boss man right there jason I got to talk to him today. That's why I'm here. But while I was here, I wanted to show you this plant. So guys, we got a concrete truck coming back from a job and he has some concrete left over. And what they do with it is dump it into these molds right here and they actually make blocks out of them. I'll show you uh, some of the blocks. Here's the mold. Basically, we got some rebar in there pour it right into these molds and then you can pull these molds apart and uh, I'll show you the blocks like I said and they can reuse this concrete instead of wasting it and that helps everybody when these blocks can be sold and uh, used for retaining walls and stuff and these are a cap for them over here that's actually going to be a you can see the contour of the cap I'll show you what they look like but basically that's a brand new form there same thing over here which will be a cap for these walls right here are these blocks that they look like on the face and they're pretty big see how big they are right there and they got this v-groove in them to lock them all together so they stack right on top of each other and i got this groove here that locks into the next joint you see on one side of the block it's got an indentation and then on the other side it's got the male the male side and that's how they lock together and like I said they're making these nice caps now 
I will show you what these caps look like. They got a little bevel on them, but you can see he filled that right up with concrete. And uh, that's before he goes into that slurry pit and dumps it, that, that sediment pond or whatever they call it. So that's gonna be a it's gonna be one of these cubes right there. So this is a liner that gets laid into it. Basically like a rubber stamp, like a almost the same as a concrete stamp that you'd stamp concrete with, except a lot thicker. That thing's like inch and a half thick. That's really solid rubber. So they put that stamp inside of here, and that's what gives you that um, that stone look on the front of it. So they would lay that inside of there, pour the concrete in there like that, and then it's going to turn out like that. So that is pretty cool. Again, there it is. Pump it like that, and that's going to be uh, probably a couple days to dry. All right, guys, I got Tommy here and Jason from Circle T. They're going to explain some of this stuff. I'm in. He's inside this uh, C van thing. There's two C vans here. The upper one is actually their office. This lower one here is for admixtures that go into the concrete. So Tommy's going to kind of explain. Uh, what these admixtures are and how they how they affect the concrete. All right, so these are thousand gallon tanks. They hold our chemicals. Um, we got five different chemicals we use. We, we use air renewal, um, accelerators, um, different chemicals for finishabilities. Um, so they're all stored here in the tanks. And if you come down here, pretty tight in here. Is this thing insulated? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's all spray foam inside here, guys. Keeps the so heat all up. the chemicals come through these hoses, and they're all measured out with the computer upstairs. Oh, cool. We've got some renew. You got the 400 NC, which is a, a water reducer. Um, more chemicals, less water. Uh, Diamond SX, good for finishability. You got the SA50, which is our air. So what does um, the air do? I know, but tell tell. Oh, uh, air is good for like uh, you know if it's not insulated. Um, exterior, it, uh, it helps it for the winter time for cracking, um, you know, stuff like that. It creates some air bubbles in the concrete. It right? puts air bubbles. Just so that it water uh, certain, certain, uh, certain guys like certain mixes with half air, okay. less air, more air. Yep, yep. Um, I'm guilty of that. Yeah, you like, you like, <laughs> you, you got a special mix we got for I you. I like my low air mix for where we are. What's this, what's this first one here? Uh, this poly, poly, this one here, this poly renew, um, okay. it's it's uh, it's like in a um, for longer distance. Uh, oh, it's a retardant. It's a retardant. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, so like if it's hotter or whatever. Hotter for okay. traveling longer distance. Okay. You know, if you got a big pour, like a big pole barn you've done in the past, you don't want that corner to start setting up before you finish the other corner. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it, you know, it, it equals it out. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. It helps with curing stuff like that. Okay, nice. um, you know, but this is uh, it's all is computerized it? upstairs. You know, it goes in percentage ounces, one percent, two percent, three percent for accelerations, um, and then basically here I do is I help do mixed designs, uh, so we know what the finishabilities are, what you're looking for for strengths. Um, I know you guys are good at taking feedback because that was one of the reasons we I, love feedback. I, you know, I like you, working with you guys. You yourself gives us a lot of good feedback. Um, Jason good and, gives us feedback with yeah, his crew. Good and, good and bad. If something ain't working, then you know you can tweak it a little bit. Well, we want to make everybody happy. Every, everybody yep. thinks that you just can buy a eight dollar bag of concrete at Home Depot and it's the same stuff. No, it isn't. No. This has no. got a lot more chemicals in it. This, it, it's stronger. It's a better mix. You know, it's not just your bag mix that everybody. Gonna, oh yeah. Going to last the bag concrete. I mean, uh, oh yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a working hard, honestly. I mean, I never realized how much is involved in making ready mixer concrete. Oh, it's a lot crazy. Of goes into it. There's a lot of quality control. Um, you know, just from temperatures to air to just making sure everything's weighing out right. So we try to keep up to speed on it all and up to date and make sure everything's consistent. That's what we want out of here is everything consistent it's, it's really it's all chemistry it really yeah, is 100 percent. like i said everybody buys we'll those go bags. down and show, show you the lab afterwards so you can kind of see what tommy does down there they so down when there you guys started there. out you had to meet certain criteria in this area mm -hmm. and uh, certain aggregates affect this concrete 
and you're kind of stuck with what aggregates are in your area versus say if we were in Florida or something maybe so I've heard of them using seashells for aggregate yeah so how does that affect what we do here so what we did before we started and got on board with Mapei that's our admixture company we went and got limestone or natural stone and sands and different stuff and we took totes of it down to their lab and they actually worked with us and I mean this their lab is just insane and these guys are just some of the smartest people I've ever met but they were able to take our samples we brought and do mixes and get us like right in the ballpark with what we had for our area mm -hmm. to make good concrete they did their testing they did cylinders they they laid it out, you know, all the way through to 30 days and, you know, 7, 14, 20, you know, they, they did quite a bit. And uh, our breaks at first were very, very high. So, you know, they wanted to go and be new, keeping us on the safe side. So as we got going and got better, we could tone the cement content back a little bit to get closer, but our breaks are still high. So your breaks, you mean where the concrete breaks, breaks at a certain PSI? Yes. So we can call concrete through 3,000 yeah. pound concrete. Like 4,000 was breaking at 5,500, you yeah, know, and, yeah. uh, you know, and we're still quite a bit over 4,000. That's you good know, for, so. that's good for me and good for the customer, that's for 100%. sure. All right, I'm gonna walk these guys around uh, and show them the outside of the plant. Some of the things I didn't show them, basically, Jason says there's some ladders I can get up high here and yeah. check some other stuff out. Stay tuned. So this right here, this tank is what? Accelerator. That's accelerator. Oh, that's yeah. accelerator? So does that not need to be heated, that stuff nope, there? No, it will not freeze. Oh, that won't freeze. Nope. Okay. Uh, that's why it's sitting outside. Okay. I know it's those other ones. We just were in this yep, right sea van here. It's all insulated and, uh, and heat in there. They keep fiber and stuff in this section here. And like I said, this upper section is actually their office, which is pretty cool. Yeah, there's a boiler. He's got a new steam boiler that they just put in here. Holy moly! Pumps moves. out some steam. Wow. So we can run those below freezing temperatures. Yeah. Oh, what's under here? That's where the tank. Oh, that's, that's the tank. tank. Yeah, that's our water tank for our heating water. It keeps it around 140 to 150 degrees. Okay, 140, 150 degree water for wintertime concrete pours. That's an insulated tank. Basically hooking up to this is a steam boiler. Yeah, this is a steam boiler. Let me go, uh, go back a little bit. All the hoppers and everything. And That's lots, cool. On the aggregates. What's the BTU of this bad boy? I honestly don't know, <laughs> Mark. We know, but we got a, it's got a we huge got a, chimney. We did get a bigger than we needed one, just to, uh, you know. There's some specs. Yeah, we definitely, we went bigger than needed. We'd rather have something that was too big than too small. It says 650 to 2,000. <laughs> That's cool. Power max, flame burner. It says max temps 250. What runs this uh, boiler? Is it oil or is it natural gas? It's or? propane. It's propane. propane, okay. For the hot water in this boiler. So when you're making hot water concrete, it actually costs more money it to does. make. That's why there's that winter charging cost because okay. there's a lot more work involved in winter doing this. I mean, it's, it takes a lot longer to set up, takes a lot longer for trucks to get going and moving. Just it, it really stinks when you get below 32 degrees yeah. you know, doing this stuff, honestly. It's a lot of work. So. That's why I don't pour in the winter. <laughs> yeah, you know, and most of these guys are pouring inside, you know, 99% of them. But uh, it, to get this concrete produced and get it there, you got to, you know, ideal concrete temperature 70 degrees. So you want to do your best to get everything to that temperature. So all your, your aggregates are sitting outside, so you're you're combating yeah. that, actually. We, are, we empty the bins every night, so we'll have to refill according to what's going on that day and that's where these the steamer comes into play because a lot of times that first foot or two layer will be frozen so oh, yeah bust it up with the loader try to get some stuff that's not frozen and then as you're feeding it you still got ice and, and other pieces on it so the steam will just help that come through or you clog up the hoppers it's just a mess you're in there trying to get sand knocked down it's a nightmare we've spent a day before trying to get you know five yards out of the place oh, with this 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 cuts that right down and this is all spray foam, this little yeah. building here. So this is all nice. All right, stay tuned, guys. There's more. So they got a new silo here laying on the ground, guys. Tommy, what's that silo for? All we're going to do is uh, everybody, you know, cement's got different uh, port Portland in it. And it's uh, cement ones and twos, mix, blends. Uh, some of the state DOT mixes have certain cement they like to put in. Uh, so this is going to be a second silo, so we're going to carry it you know a different type of cement for some of the state 
mixes. Okay. They all state for like the bridges and, and throughways and stuff like that. Okay. So, Are they using like uh, fly ash mixes and uh, uh, we don't slag mixes? We use fly ash here. We use slag mixes for for a lot of your DOT. Okay. Um, but we don't use us personally here. We do not use fly ash. I know the stuff I use has no fly ash in it. Nope. But um, so th they're going to add slag maybe to some of these uh, state jobs. You think? Yeah. There's different there's different mixes for like uh, you know when a customer calls up. Like yourself, you'll call up and tell us you need a 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 pound mix with air, no air. You'll tell us what it's for, garages, basements, stuff like that. When state call up and we do a state job, it's, it, it comes in like class J, class HP, class, you know, C, stuff like that. Totally it's, different. It's than totally different. Than we have I to do. use different aggregate and everything for state mode. I see you got some limestone aggregate I was showing over there yep. versus the stone that we have in our area. That limestone, is that coming out of Watertown? All that limestone? Uh, it is. It actually comes right out of uh, a Watertown um, up near uh, Kings Quarry. Yeah, okay. So I thought that. Did. That's yep. what I was saying. Because the browner stone is the stuff that they pulverize around here. Yep, right around here. We actually get that right from uh, uh, Lindsley's. Right Lindsley right aggregates. The corner, yep. So. so that's all our local stuff. Yep. But like I said, you try to work with the aggregates that are in your area because it's more cost effective. Absolutely. You know, less nowadays with traveling and you know, like the limestone obviously costs us more just from traveling alone. Oh, like yeah. that we either go get it with our dump trucks or we have them bring us, you know, half a dozen loads. Oh, yeah. So, for sure. So these tanks behind you, those are propane tanks are propane for that tanks boiler, for right? Boiler, yep. Holy moly. And we got a couple more on the other side of the vehicles that run, uh, like, heating our buildings and stuff like that. These ones here run just our boiler. These are 1,000-gallon tanks. 1,000-gallon tanks. Wow, 2,000-gallon tanks. And that boiler that I just took you is right in here. Or no, right in here. Right in that building. That right building. building. And then that's, I showed you the rest of that. But that's all that all ties together. Tommy's gonna take me down to the lab, is that what you said? Yeah, I'm gonna take you down to the lab. We're gonna see, uh, we're gonna show you how we test our aggregate, how we test uh, uh, for the strength, and then how the state comes in and they test everything for our roadways and bridges and um, throughways and stuff. All right, cool. Stay with us. Okay, here we go. This is what we call our state lab. Oh, nice. Um, so what we actually do is uh, we go out and we get buckets of different material that we carry. You know, we get the, the, the stone, the sand, and we test it. We break it down in machines. Um, I do fine gradations. Uh, it comes along with a bunch of, you know, calculations and stuff to see what passes, what, what works. Um, Different material will make different strengths. It'll make it better finishability, um, creamier, um, bonier, stuff like that. Um, you know, we shake the big rocks down in this big machine here. So you, you put them in there and yep. shake so them down? I'll actually show you real quick. Yeah. Like we'll, we'll weigh out a certain amount of rock and stuff. It gets put down into here. Okay. And this has got different size sieves down through it. Oh, yeah, different we, screen sizes. Yep, and we, we oh, put okay. it down here. This thing shakes crazy. I mean, it shakes the whole building, basically. Yep. Shakes it down, and then you actually weigh each tray to calculate what material goes in. You know, eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch stone, one inch stone, two inch stone, whatever you're looking to get out of your So it mix. tells you how much of each kind of size stone you have put in there. Yep. If you filled that. Yeah. This breaks it down, breaks it down so that you know it. exactly how much we got some beat. paper forms we fill out with uh, different calculations and that's how we become with our mixed designs uh, you know some some you know we want the cream to come to the top more we need bonier we need um, you know more stone for different strengths like if it has different stones you might only have a 3500 pound mix 4000 pound mix because so stone can, adds strength to the concrete. So yes, certain does. stones, like limestone, probably affects it different than than our stone here, correct? Yep, yep. So, limestone has more of a sharper point yep. compared to um, bedrock and stuff has different round parts and, and stuff like that on it. Um, you get a little stronger strength out of limestone. How about the sand? Do you test the sand? In this I test the here? sand a lot, and it's the same kind of concept over here. Okay. These are just uh, smaller sieves. You know, it, it oh, shakes cool. it right down a whole bunch of different size sieves. Oh, that's cool. So each one of these, it says number four, number Yep, number eight, four, number eight. 16. So they're just sizes of screens. You yep, say size sieves, screens. They're just screens. More that's or less symmetric. Like that's a three eighths. Okay. 
yeah. and it, it just it just shakes it just shakes the stone down and then I take each one of these I, I, I weigh it out and uh, I break the sand down to see if the sand actually passes or fails um, you're only supposed to have so much percentage of each size stone that breaks down or sand that breaks down to go through okay. um, people everybody thinks sand is like the sand you get on the beach it's not no if you go look and you take that sand off a beach and you actually put in a shaker and you shake it down, there is, beyond belief, there's probably 50 different size pebbles in every little sand. Okay. But when you pick it up, you feel it, you think, oh, this is nice play sand, this is beach sand. Right. Well, you put in a shaker and it breaks it down to what exactly is in it. I know I've seen different concretes finish different with the different sands. Yep, some, sometimes we put a little more sand in it to get a little more smoother finish. Um, like I said, everybody, I constantly go back to everybody thinks that you can go buy a bag sand that does the same thing. It don't. No. That's why we have, we personally have over 40 different mix designs. Wow. That we prefer to customers that are looking to get something built. A shed, uh, a garage, a pole barn. You know, some people are building houses and foundations. And we, we can tell them and, and, and suggest what we feel is proper for whatever pour they're doing. So the sand and aggregates that you bring in here, <coughs> is that material washed? Uh, no, no. Um, it's not washed. Some of the stone does get pre-washed, okay. um, but then when we come in here or the state comes in here, the state will actually wash it down with other size sieves, Okay. which has a screen sieve. Oh yeah. All right. It's real actually, fine. It's real, real fine. fine. They'll wash that right down and it, it, it'll, it'll almost look like a, like a chocolate milk when it's done. Oh, that's cool. And then that has to be included in all your calculations. Then this is my favorite machine. You know, we'll get, uh, depends on what size cylinders you make. Um, here we personally test everything with a, uh, a four by eight, or you can do a six by 12, which I don't have handy. Um, but you make the concrete, we put it in here, we cure it. Um, How long do you cure it for? Well, again, it all tests. Uh, we do field cures, like you would do, like if you were pouring a garage. Um, we also do, um, water bath so we'll water bath it for seven days 14 days sometimes it really depends on what the engineer wants and that all affects the strength of the kind yep, how yep. it's cured sometimes they'll tell us an engineer will tell us they need 3,000 psi in seven days okay you know and it, it can be done listen we we have put here personally on certain jobs people needed uh, states needed a you know they can only close a bridge down for six hours yep Yep. I, I've personally designed concrete to make uh, 7,000 PSI in five hours. Wow, that's awesome. It's got a lot to do with a lot of that chemicals that you were showing earlier, yep. um, stuff like that. And then what we do is these are basically molds. We pop them out of the mold. They go in here. This is all computerized. And this will actually crush. And it'll tell us what the PSI is on the concrete. The crush like pushes it yeah, down? It, we, we'll put them in here, you know, they'll be not in the mold, they'll be in the concrete. Yep. They go in these things here. Cylinder. Sits in here and then this thing comes right down, crushes it, it'll pop, and then it'll all calculate on the computer and tell us, you know, at what point it crushes. Yeah, it'll something. tell us what crush and um, type, of fracture it type of fracture, and the type of fracture has got a lot to do with, again, how much sand we put, how much stone we put, how much concrete we put. There's there's a lot to it that some people just, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, sometimes I'll spend four hours in here testing all the, the, the aggregates that we get, the sand that we get by just testing, mm -hmm. constantly testing to, to improve ourselves, to get better concrete. Um, and like Jason was saying earlier, our concrete is, it's strong. Our 4,000 pounds is usually breaking like you know, 46, 4,700. That's awesome. You know, yeah, we could start, you know, analyzing it by breaking down 20 pounds less of this, 10 pounds less of that in a load, but then you don't, you, you're playing with fire. Yep, yep. Our concrete has never failed us. Our concrete is strong. I've had zero callbacks. So there you <laughs> go. Knock on wood, that's pretty good. <laughs> and coming from my end, I help design it. Coming from your end, yep. you're the one that places it. Yep. And, that, and that both can affect factor. it. Yeah, both can affect it. That's <laughs> I can tell you what it's supposed to do, but until that person like yourself is actually placing the concrete, working with it, polishing it, burning it, all that stuff, we won't know. Yep. And feedback that you give us, you know, we sit down as a, as a group here and, and you know, we, we 
we try to better ourselves every time we hear. Yep, that's why. I How can we be better guys. ourselves? Yep. If it means that you know we're putting an extra three dollars worth of material into a load to get a little bit better PSI, well, that takes care of that. Yep. You know, yep. but then Money you'll call us and tell us, hey, it's it's the finishability is a little tough. Yep. Well, then I'll change it up and we'll add maybe a little cement, a little sand, mm -hmm. maybe a little less stone. We'll change things up. But again, when you change things up, it's not just again pulling fifty pounds out of something. It all has to. Got to be end, tested again. It's got to be tested <laughs> yeah. again, and it has to equal, yeah. you know, a cubic yard. It, everything gets tested right to, you know, so we don't shy people. Right. If you take ours, our yard, our yield of one yard is actually a hair over. Well, it's perfect, yeah. Which is good because yep. again, you never get a hundred percent out of a truck. Some no. sticks to that, you know you. You waste it a little bit by screeting it off, you know, so yep. it all plays it plays awesome. a big role in concrete. Awesome. Well thanks, Tommy, so. for showing us all this.